Good afternoon. How are you? Wonderful to be here. Wonderful to see you as well. And I really am excited that you're able to screen this incredible film, Mr. and Pete, today that um, is so dear to me and, and really I'm, I'm so passionate about this piece and what it talks about and what it means to all of us. So I want to thank Ms. Obama for inviting me here today and for screening our film. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this topic and it deserves the spotlight. It deserves, it, it deserves to be spoken about continuously and sometimes it's, it's so far away from the spotlight. So it's really important for today for us all to, to engage in this way. The first time that I read the script of Mr. and Pete, I was like totally drawn in. I mean, it was one of those things where, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but if you've ever read a book and you're so attached to the characters of the book, you find yourself like throwing it on the floor. How could you do that? I mean, you're just like so upset by what's happening. You know, you're so drawn in or you're so connected. And that's exactly how I felt about this script. It, I read it in one day. It just, it just flowed. I, I felt, I felt one minute I was laughing, the next minute I was crying. I was totally drawn into the complexity of these characters, to, to what it was speaking about, about you know, where we are in America and just how we are as people. And it was just, it, it, was, it was like devastating and mesmerizing all at the same time. And I, I just knew from that moment, right there, I had, to, I had to become involved. It was so complex and so human and so honest. And, and it mirrored the reality of so many kids in America, kids I know, kids I grew up with. And it made me think of my own childhood growing up in, in, in Hell's Kitchen and in Harlem in the middle of it all, exposed to every side of the spectrum of possibility, the good, the bad, the ugly, the dark, the light. And uh, it, it, it had the potential where I grew up to be a very dark place. It was whatever you chose, basically, right? And I guess where we all grow up, whatever you choose is what ends up being your reality. And I was fortunate to have, a, an, have an incredible mother. You know, it was just her and I. And she happened to be one of one, you know, who really, really helped me to find my way through, through dark times and was very involved. But I saw my friends and, and people that I knew go through crazy things. And oftentimes I, was, I would think back and say, you know, how easily that could have been me, you know, how easily that could be me. And so how easily I could have been a mister, you know, it's, it's just that easy. So after I read the script, I knew I had to get involved and, and there, was just, there was just no other way. And, but let me tell you, it definitely wasn't easy. It was not easy at all. You know, if we were making a film about drug dealers and pimps and violence and like, you know, some tragic, horrible ending, we probably had a much easier time doing this whole thing. <laughs> but, um, you know, this is, it's difficult, you know? It's difficult to, to talk about. And, and this film about a young, a young black boy being triumphant through all the faces of the most difficult, harshest realities, you know? And, and those narratives are not really often spoken about and perhaps not what people are really comfortable talking about, you know? Or comfortable addressing. So that's exactly why it needed to happen and why we worked so hard to make it happen. There's a moment in the film where the police officer, you know, if, if you remember towards the end where he, where he said, you know, he tells Mr. that you've got to keep fighting, you know, and like there's no ceiling for a kid like you. And the fact that he actually recognized that in him, you know, when no one saw anything in him ever, you know, I, I, I felt so moved by that moment and so connected to that moment. And, and it really resonated with me because it is true. And there is, there is no one who can make it on their own. No one, not in this whole world, you know? And, and especially our kids. So, so that's where education comes in and the access to quality, unbiased education, specifically higher education. And it creates a pathway out of poverty. It creates unlimited possibilities. And, and in my travels, one of the things I'm probably most touched by is you know when I've when I've gone through my work with with HIV with my organization Keep a Child Alive and I've sat with young children who you know are 13 like a Mister or 12 like a Mister and they're raising their younger brothers and sisters because they lost their parents to AIDS you know and they're what you call child-headed households and all they want to do is go to school that's all they want is the chance to go to school you know and it's like such an important thing that's not to be taken for granted. You know, we can't take that for granted. So it opens doors, it helps our children, and it, and it absolutely benefits us all. 
So I want to thank you so much for, for fighting and doing this important work and, and really contributing your time and your energy and your like passion and love and sleeplessness and real, true humanity. Because uh, I think sometimes, often, it must feel like no one's really recognizing your work or understanding what it is that you do and the time that you spend on it and how much you care about it. And I just want you to know that we are paying attention. I am paying attention. These kids are paying attention. They're really the only ones that matter anyway, because we touched one life in this world, and we've really done something. You know, we've done something. So, so we owe it to our kids, and you know that more than, more than anything, and uh, especially the ones like Mr. and Pete, you know, who are growing up out here with unfair obstacles in their way and really having to overcome so much before they can even get started. So, so we owe it to them to fight for their education, for their opportunities, and, and for their lives. So a, a wonderful thank you to our great First Lady as well. Thank you for recognizing the significance of this film, and thank you for fighting for what's real and for what's necessary and for what's worthy and right. And your role of raising the profile of higher education here in America will lead us to an absolute more powerful, empowered future. So. I want to thank you for having me as well, and I would like to introduce an inspiring woman, and <laughs> her name is Jennifer Vado Alman, and she's an educator at Gaithersburg High School in Maryland. Um, she is a committed classroom teacher and a ma magnificent mother who's passionate in her conviction that all students can achieve when given fair access to the right re resources. So Jennifer, thank you so much to working, for working to uplift underperforming and underrepresented and maybe misunderstood groups and children and, and us. So we need more people like you. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Jennifer Vado Elliman. Thank you, Alicia. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. As Ms. Keyes just introduced, I'm Jen Beto Aleman, a high school English teacher, wife, and mother from Gaithersburg, Maryland. And today, it is my distinct honor to introduce our First Lady of the United States. We just had the opportunity to view a poignant film, which we've heard much more about, that puts faces and narratives to the real Misters and Peets who exist in our classrooms and our communities everywhere, including my own and they're all two real stories of academic defeat and unrealized potential. But we will also hear today about the critical work being done on college access and opportunity so that the stories of these students will be about their success because of more available pathways to college. These are the values and beliefs I too hold. As the daughter of Latino immigrants, a teacher in a diverse school, and now a mother myself, I know the power of education. My parents did not go to college. English is their second language, as it is for many of my students. But my family instilled in me the power of education. And had I not been able to access an affordable university option or access financial aid and scholarships, even though I sacrificed and I lived at home and worked throughout college, I would not have been able to attain my undergraduate, undergraduate degree and then later my master's to become a teacher, a profession I love. Now it's this opportunity to access college that I want for my students and my son, for all our students and children. Mrs. Obama personally understands the importance of college access. As she's been sharing with students across the country, she too is the daughter of parents who did not attend college, but who always understood the value of education. She persevered, as we know, to become an accomplished professional. She stands as an example of the power of this determination and the promise of education. And now, she champions for that opportunity to be afforded to all. Her story shows us the amazing possibilities when we provide opportunity and access. And her and the President's work on college access and the nation's 2020 goal challenges us to confront whether or not we really believe that someone's starting point in life should never determine his or her end point in this country, should never limit his or her potential. And so it is my surreal honor right now and privilege to introduce to you the First Lady of the United States, Mrs. Michelle Obama. Thank you all. 
all. Thanks so much. The applause should go to all of you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. You guys, rest yourselves. You work hard enough. I don't want you to wear yourselves out clapping for me here in the White House. Um, it is truly a pleasure uh, to welcome you all here uh, today to the White House. I, I want to start by thanking Jen uh, for that uh, wonderful introduction, but also for her work uh, as one of the millions of teachers out there who are doing their part to keep our kids on track. And as she said, it's not just her role as a teacher, but also as a mom, which is I say that all the time, in the end, it's the most important job we have, no matter whether you're teaching or serving in the White House. Um, you know, it's the, the first part of contrib contributing to the society. So thank you for your work. Thank you for being here. Uh, and I have to recognize my dear friend, Ms. Alicia Keys, for her eloquence and her foresight in seeing the value of this movie uh, and investing in it, along with many other uh, very smart people. I was telling uh, Alicia that I saw th this movie this summer um, and I wept like I know all of you all did because you can't help but weep and laugh and l look in horror uh, and to cheer uh, for these two young kids because they represent all our kids. And the minute I got through watching this movie I said I am going to screen this at the White House. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, this is the movie that should begin the conversation that is already happening about what we have to do to invest in kids in this community because there are millions of Mr. and Pete's out there who are just struggling to make it. Um, so I am thrilled that you could be here today, get it done. <laughs> Took a little second, had a few things in the way, but we got through it and we're here. Um, and I also want to thank the screenwriter, uh, Michael. Michael, where is Michael? <laughs> Michael is here. <laughs> well done. Well done. Um, and most of all, I want to thank all of you. All of you for uh, taking the time to participate in this screening. Uh, and this discussion and for the work that you're doing uh, to move our kids forward and basically keep our country thriving uh, and on top. Uh, and again, there's a reason why I invited you all here. We did this because for many of you this movie isn't just a powerful story of a, a, or a great piece of art. Uh, for so many of you, it's the reality you see every day in your classrooms and in your communities. Uh, this is not unfamiliar. Many of you work with kids just like Mr. and, and Pete. You see them every day. Uh, kids struggling uh, against heartbreaking odds um, in neighborhoods torn apart by poverty and, and, and hopelessness, uh, surrounded by gangs and guns and, and, and drugs. You see this every day. but. See, this is the thing, um, the beauty of, of this movie. This movie isn't just about the challenges that kids like Mr. and Pete are facing. And, and, and that's really why this movie was so powerful to me, um, because it's also about their courage. You know, It's about their grit, uh, their resilience. Those are three words you are going to hear me say a lot over the next three years, grit, <laughs> resilience, courage that these kids displayed even in the most hopeless circumstances. You know, kids are living like this every day, every day. Uh, and all of you see this firsthand every single day in, in, in your lives. And think of all the kids you know uh, who somehow maintain that fierce commitment to their dreams, just like Mr. did. You know, he was going to be an actor, right? <laughs> yeah, he was going to find a way to get to, the, to, to aud that audition. Uh, think of all the kids who show each other the kind of love and loyalty uh, that Mr. and Pete show to each other, even when they don't see it in their own lives. Even when they don't get it themselves, somehow intrinsically they find a way to replicate it in their lives, wherever they can find it. Think about all the, the talent, you know, all the intelligence, all that drive that you see in every single one of these kids. You see it. All that untapped promise, uh, that vast, unfulfilled human potential, the frustration that comes when you have something deep inside of you and you got nowhere to go with it, nowhere to go. 
And all of that is both the tragedy and, more importantly, the opportunity that exists for millions of kids in this country. We all know that these kids could be the next generation of workers and innovators and, and leaders. You all know that. They could be building the, the businesses and making the discoveries and enriching the communities that will fuel our economies for decades to come. So when all of you are out there working to inspire and educate these kids, you're not just building a better future for them and for their families. Uh, you're actually building a better future for our country. That's, that's the work that you do. You may not get credit for it, but that's what you're doing. And, and that's really what drives me. And that is truly what drives my, my husband, your president. Uh, that's why he set a goal that by the year 2020, our country would once again have the highest proportion of college graduates in the world. He wants to get us back on top. And as part of that effort, tomorrow, uh, we are going to be hosting a White House summit of university presidents from all across the country. And we'll be challenging them to recruit and support even more underserved young students at their schools. And for the rest of my time as First Lady, um, in addition to all my other initiatives, so nothing's going away, we're just adding more on, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be doing my very best to promote these efforts by talking directly with young people. That's my focus. Everybody else is going to be talking about resources, but the one thing I can bring to this is the message that we can give directly to young people. Uh, I'm going to be conveying the simple truth. I'm going to tell them that they have a, everything they need to succeed already. It's all in there, but they still have to be committed uh, to getting their educations. Um, I'm going to be making a special effort, obviously, to reach kids like Mr. And, and Pete who face such overwhelming obstacles in their lives. And as you all know, too often these kids view their difficult life experiences as weaknesses. You know, they, they view what they go through as a, as a source of, of embarrassment and shame sometimes. But as we all know, it, it's really just the opposite. And it's important for them to understand that. I want these young people to understand that their struggles can actually be a source of strength uh, and, and even a source of pride because they've overcome obstacles and learned skills that many of us will never have, you know, that many of us need to actually get the real work done. And I tell my kids, you know, you can't always teach resilience. It's, it's the life you live that, that gets you there. And these kids have lived some lives. So I remind these kids, look, if you, if you could go through all that you've already gone through, you know, and just think of what you've already made it through. You've lost people you love to violence and drugs. You have to have a strategy just to get to school safely. <laughs> You're smart enough to figure out how to stay out of gangs. You've seen your family fighting just to get by, and you still keep moving. You, you, you've adjusted to living in another country and needing to learn another language. Maybe no one in your family speaks that language, yet you're still going to school and you're still making it. So what I want these kids to understand is that if you can do all of that, <laughs> then certainly you can fill out a FAFSA form, <laughs> you know? That is not the intimidating part of life. If, 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 if you can do that, then surely you can get up in the morning and, and get to class, get to school on time and pay attention. That's not the hard part. They've already gotten through the hard part. They can do all that they can do. Surely they can seek out some adults in their lives because there's always one adult I don't care how bad the school is or how bad the neighborhood, there is always one adult who will move mountains for a kid who wants something. You all are those people. You can seek that adult out. You can get the help you need. I want to give them the confidence to know that what they go through prepares them for all that they need to do in, in the future. I remind them, though, that all of that is their responsibility, though. In the end, that's up to them. 
but it is our responsibility to make sure that they have those caring adults in their lives. It's our responsibility to make sure they have schools that will teach them. It's our responsibility to make sure they have programs that support them and universities that will seek them out and give them a chance and then prepare them and help them finish their degrees once they get in. And I go to the scene that, that you talked about, Alicia, in the movie, because that is the scene that just did me in. <laughs> I still can't think about that scene without breaking down. But when the police officer, after all that mister went through, <laughs> this boy just, just broke down. And he says, uh, keep fighting, because there ain't no ceiling for a kid like you. There's no ceiling. But mister says, I can't do it alone. And as Alicia says, no one can do it alone. And we have to show these kids that they're not doing this alone. That's what we're here for. So I want to thank you all for being, you know, that, that hand that is there for these kids and to keep finding ways to do this because you've got an ally in the White House. You've got a president who believes in this, who's going to work. You've got a secretary of education who believes in this. You have a first lady who's going to do whatever I can uh, to support you and, and these kids. So we have to keep working together. We have to keep fighting because these kids are worth it. They are worth it. So with that, I thank you. <laughs> I'm going to leave and let you guys finish your discussion, right? Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Roberto and, and Catherine, who are education policy leaders for this administration. Uh, and they're going to come up today and, and continue the, the conversation uh, that this film has started. And hopefully, it will be a conversation that we'll continue to have throughout the country. How do we continue to help lift these kids up? What do we do to make sure that, that they're not alone? And the first responsibility for young people is to own their education. We all know that. If they're not owning it, then there's very little that we can do. Um, but I'm going to work on that too, right? So thank you again, uh, Alicia, Michael, to all the, the producers, the people who made this movie possible. Thank you all. Uh, this is truly one of my favorite films this year. Um, and it obviously has moved me. Uh, and it will be the guiding post for my work over the next three years. So congratulations on a job well done. And, you know, let's get to work, right? Uh, Roberto, Catherine, you guys can come on up. We'll get it done. Yeah, thank you.